Hey guys, welcome yet again to yet another Home Range Poultry video. On today's video, this is a very special uh, session because uh, the first thing that I'm going to show you guys today is actually the entire process of actually uh, introducing chicks into the brooder and guide you on everything that you're supposed to do on the first day when you receive the chicks. So, uh, as you can see, I'm right uh, at home. Now, what am I doing at home? Now, the first most important step before you engage in any uh, poultry uh, business early in the morning is to make sure you're well fed. So, I'm home, I'm having my breakfast, some snack, some bread, and some tea. And uh, once I'm done, we'll go to the farm and I'm going to show you how every single thing is done. Now, the question is, why is it that you have to eat first? Now, this is the reason. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that people make during the induction of chicks, this is the introduction of chicks into the brooder, is that they take shortcuts, you know, on cleanliness, on sanitation, and a lot of times, it's just purely because of fatigue and hunger. So, to deal with that, I made sure I got some nice rest yesterday at night, and I slept enough, and now, I'm having my snack. So, let me finish up, then we head to the farm, and we do this together. Keep watching. So, guys, I've just uh, finished my breakfast, so... Now we head to the farm and you go start the whole process. Let's go. I've arrived at the, at the farm and um, I, I just thought uh, as I was taking the drive here that there are a couple of uh, more things that I need to show you, uh, especially with regarding chick transport. Now, chick transportation is uh, one of the areas where you can actually get a lot of mortalities for your chicks. So there are a couple of things that you've got to get right. Number one, do not transport your chicks on a border border or on a motorbike especially on a long distance and the main reason for that is of course the chicks are going to chill eh? and even when you introduce them to the brooder they're actually going to die so for me of course i, I use my vehicle or just hire a car and uh, the chicks are brought but the important thing uh, is that when you're using a vehicle you need to remember that you do not fully enclose all the windows you need to leave some room for ventilation both for you and also for the chicks so um, i want to show you uh, where the chicks are uh, uh, I have 500 chicks uh, here, which uh, I want us to introduce into the brooder. So let's go to the, the boot and I'll show you where the chicks are. And uh, of course, like I said, you can use any type of uh, uh, vehicle that you want. So as you can see, my chicks are in the brooder, uh, sorry, in the boot. But as you can see, eh, it's really simple. Really, all that I've done is uh, made sure that the chicks actually have uh, sufficient ventilation. And as you know, for us, home range, we deal with the, the curry improved Kienyeji chicken. And uh, yeah, so let's start the process. Uh, I'm just outside our farm where we are going to be doing the brooding. And uh, of course, once we start the entire process, so you'll see the step-by-step -step guide. You'll see the procedures that you're going to use to get into the, into the farm and also into the brooder. So guys, something else that I have got to mention is uh, whenever you're going into the poultry farm, remember, if you look at my shoes, I have uh, just uh, regular sport shoes, but these are not ideal for you to go into the farm with. So the first thing that I'm gonna do before I even get into the uh, farm is to change into my gumboots. And of course, I always uh, prefer to use white gumboots so that when they get a bit dirty, I'm able to know. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change into my gumboots. So there you go, as far as the footwear is concerned, I'm all set, however, there will be some more steps that I'll show you there once I'm getting into the poultry farm that you're supposed to follow. So let's get these chicks inside the poultry farm. So as you can see, first step of procedure is to step into the uh, disinfectant, that is a foot bath. So this foot bath right here is actually uh, composed of a poisonous uh, uh, disinfectant such as carol. So every time before you come from outside that you go uh, inside into the farm, you step into it and also the same procedure is followed when you're going out. Up here, you can see we have a sanitizer that we actually sanitize our hands with before we go inside the poultry farm. And of course, we do this to ensure that we do not bring any uh, bacteria or fungus or germs from outside and ensure that we keep our farm uh, disease free. So once we get into the compound, here we are. We are bringing all the chicks uh, and placing them here. You can still, they're in these uh, specialized cartons, which are very important. The transport cartons are very important. So don't just put chicks in any random kind of boxes because you're likely to suffocate them. As you can see, these cartons have holes on all sides, including the top. Okay, and actually, if you check 
in between here there's actually a gap that is wide enough for ventilation from the bottom so let's bring in all the chicks and then we can start the process so guys you saw us pick the chicks from the vehicle explain to you about the chick, the, the chick packaging boxes and now it is for us now to get check out the chicks and start introducing them into the brooder now there are a couple of things you have to do first and foremost i am not ready to start handling chicks the way i look yes i know i already mentioned that i have the the gum boots it's very important for you to ensure that your gum boots are clean remember we stepped into the disinfectant before we got into the farm and now that we're inside the farm the next thing for us to do is now be properly uh, worn for us to be able to start handling chicks so the first thing that i'm going to do is number one i'm going to disinfect my hands with a non-poisonous disinfectant so this is a non-poisonous disinfectant this non-poisonous is safe for your hands so the first thing that you're going to do is disinfect your hands before you actually uh, handle anything so once you disinfect your hands the next thing is for you to have a dust coat on top why are we wearing a dust coat on top now it's very important before you start handling ticks you wear a clean dust coat to ensure that any dirt that is actually on my clothes that is from outside i don't go and start introducing it into the ticks so here we go my dust coat once i wear my my dust coat to have a dust mask now most people in our videos who go as far back as 2015 they see that we're always wearing our face mask it was not because of covid but because every time you're at a poultry farm there's a lot of dust okay that is in the air that you can actually get affected by and also remember that you as a human being also carry a lot of disease causing uh, germs and bacteria so you don't want viruses so you don't want to transmit those ones to the chicken so get a face mask wear your face mask and of course my head covering and once you have that as you can see now i'm ready to handle ticks so before we even get the chicks and we take them into the brooder, the first thing we have to do is do an inspection of the brooder. So I want us to go upstairs where our brooder is located and we look at the brooder. What are we going to be looking at the brooder? Number one, we need to make sure that the place is clean, okay? And, an, and, a, and that nice fresh layer is actually already placed to ensure that the chicks are not stepping on anything dirty. And then number two, we have to make sure that it is warm enough. Remember, the brooder, the main purpose is for, to ensure that it's providing enough heat for your chicks. So we have to check and ensure that the brooder is warm enough before we get the ticks and we throw them inside and here is the best part guys for our brooder we use an automated system which you can check out one of the videos that we have explaining to you about the digital smart system that we use that is able to tell us the temperature inside the brooder and that once the brooder becomes too hot it switches off the heat source and if the, the brooder becomes too cold it switches on the system so it's a fantastic uh, automated system so let's go upstairs let's check it out let's ensure the brooder is okay and then we can come and get the ticks and introduce them here we are going up into the brooder you can see i have some clean uh, water that is distilled distilled meaning it's water that has been boiled overnight and it has cooled and that's what we're going to be using up here already have the supplies that i'll be using some chick stout some liquid paraffin i will explain that later and of course here we have the drinkers that you're going to be using and remember of course immediately the chicks come into the brooder we do not give them any feed we just give them water mixed with that liquid paraffin and the chick start so before we get into the brooder you can see some more disinfecting water here remember this is the poisonous disinfectant so you step in it first as you can see i've stepped in it and i don't go back outside there eh? what i do once i step in it is now i step inside where the brooder is as you can see okay the next phase is the hand disinfectant so it's very important for you to use the hand disinfectant and of course because i'm holding the camera i will have to put it down for me to disinfect my hands then we can proceed so once i've disinfected my hands now we can proceed into the brooder now our brooder as you can see is not the typical ones that people build where you have wood shavings on the floor so as you can see it's a double story brooder also so there's a room down here and another one up here which is a brooder so let's go on and uh, open the top one so once we open you're able now to check inside and uh, as you can see there is the infrared bulbs that you're seeing up there now the reason why you're seeing they are not on is because the heat is already enough so our automated system that is here that is called a renifu has already regulated the temperature and it is ensured that the temperature is ambient as you can see there are th thermometers here there's another one here 
there is another one right there and another one in the far end so there are already four thermometers that are testing the temperature inside the brooder again it's during the day right now it's around uh, midday so it's also equally hot so the additional heat is has now caused the system to actually shut the system off but as you can see on the switches they're actually on so just because the infrared bulbs are not on does not mean that the heat is not on but just for demonstration purposes uh, i would want to switch off the system and switch it on again so that you actually see that the infrared bulbs are actually working so here we go so we've just switched the entire system off now we switch it on and as you can see all the infrared bulbs have come on now they've come on as uh, we await the system to deploy and reset so once it resets, it starts calibrating and checking the temperature. And if the temperature is hot enough, the infrared bulbs are automatically going to go uh, off. Now, the other thing that I want you to notice is that in our brooder, we don't use any wood shavings, as you can see. So these are normal. These are the normal bags, the polypropylene bags that are used for storage of feed. So once we, we are done with them, we, as you've, you've had a beep from the system telling you now the system is on, so it's calibrating. So what it's going is that it's going to be testing the temperature. And actually on my phone, it's going to send me a notification uh, telling me that the heat now is good enough and that uh, it's going to switch off the system and every time it switches off the system it actually sends me an sms now even i myself just being here eh, uh, it's actually extremely hot i'm actually already sweating so that's a good indication that actually the brooder is hot enough so the main thing remember that the, the from the bottom of the brooder to the top of the bulb you need to leave at least three feet of space that's very very important that's almost about uh, a meter and uh, yeah, that should be high enough for you to be able to uh, ensure that the brooder is heated enough. Now at the far extreme corner, right there, you can see that there's something that is there. And that's my CCTV surveillance camera. So inside our brooders, I ensure that not only are we able to check the temperature using the automated system, which usually sends us SMS notification. But in case I want to see why is the heat too much, I can just check out to confirm that the bulbs are actually off so that the system does not send you an SMS telling you the system is off. Well, in actual sense, it is malfunctioning and the bulbs are on. So to check that, I usually use the CCTV surveillance uh, system. And of course, it's an IP camera, so I'm able to access the content from anywhere. So yes, I have confirmed that the brooder is actually hot enough and uh, I'm happy with the temperature. So the next thing that now we are going to do is uh, prepare the water for the chicks. And once you do that, you're going to come and place it inside before now we bring in the chicks inside. So let's go and prepare the water. So guys, here we are. So that's the distilled water. Now, since we've already confirmed that the brooder is okay, now the next step is to mix up the water that the chicks are going to be taking. Now for the first water that these chicks are going to be taking, eh, there are two very important things that you're going to give them. One is this that is called the medicinal liquid paraffin. So... Uh, we we'll mix the medicinal liquid paraffin with some with some multivitamins. So as you can see, these multivitamins uh, they contain quite a wide range of multivitamins from vitamin A, D3, blah blah blah. You can see it also has some uh, dextrose or glucose in it, some energy source and some minerals. So these are very important for your chicks when they are starting out. So it's up to you to decide which uh, brand that you want to use. Uh, so what you're going to do is that you're going to mix this in to the drinkers and once you do that you're going to put them into the uh, brooding brooder brooders inside and then you're going to introduce the chick and i'll show you the process so let's do the mixing guys
as you can see everything now is well mixed multivitamins with the liquid paraffin and uh, so the next step once you ensure that everything is well mixed is for you to take them inside the brooder remember that each time you're going inside the brooder you must do what step into the uh, foot bath that's the foot bath and you make sure that you disinfect your hands so let's do that and you'll see us introducing the uh, the drinkers inside the brooder so as you, we have added some uh, uh, wooden platforms so these wooden platforms are for you to place the drinkers so usually don't place the drinkers directly on the polypropylene because of spillages and you also need to make sure that it is on the level with the neck of the cheek so you have to raise the drink a bit and you do that using these uh, wooden platforms now very important to note is that these wooden platforms have been disinfected using a non-poisonous disinfectant so watch as i place the drinkers and then uh, from there we'll do the cheek induction see i have uh, added the drinkers the four drinkers the heat is still on because i just restarted the system so that it can start heating again so now i think we can comfortably say that now this brooder is ready for the chicks so you're going to bring them and start doing induction to them so basically chick induction is introducing them into the brooder you don't just come and throw them inside what you do is that you've got to take one chick at a time and put the beak inside the drinking water so let's do that now so now guys you're going to get the chicks remember you disinfect your hands before touching any chick so you're going to be doing induction on that side and some induction on this side <music> the chicks inside the boxes okay because they've had a prolonged uh, transport so i know they are very thirsty so actually part of the reason why i want to put them under the light is so that they don't chill and they don't freeze and they have some heat so for chick induction what you usually do is pick one chick at a time get the chick and dip the beak in water like that then once you do that you leave the chick there so you'll often notice that the chick is already thirsty so it may actually continue drinking the water so you do that for every single chick you put it right next there and that will basically conclude the entire process for uh, chick induction i know it looks uh, very tiring and uh, uh, very labor intensive but it's got to be done because this is the right way for you to actually do chick induction remember these chicks do not know this is a new brooder this is a new environment so you've got to show them where the water is and of course once you do that you give them at least uh, two to three uh, hours and then uh, after that that's when now you can come and we bring in the feeders and as you can see currently the chicks only have drinking water and i can see this boy right here is uh, very happy to be in their new home you can see they're in a very clean environment and uh, yeah so that basically concludes the uh, uh, chick induction so watch as you do the induction <music> as you can see we finished uh, that particular box each box is carrying 100 ticks so those ones have been inducted and uh, now it's for us to wait and see them adjust into the brooder and uh, yeah so let's finish off with the rest uh, because we are adding uh, 500 ticks and then you can call it a day uh, around two three hours are over so i think what i suggest we do is uh, we get into the brooder we check if uh, the ticks have adjusted well and if they have all we need to do let me see yeah it's actually exactly two and a half hours since we did the chick induction so what you're about to go inside and check is whether the chicks have adjusted correctly whether they have drunk some water and most importantly there's some droppings that you usually check to confirm whether the digestive system is working okay so let's go inside the brooder and check it out so yeah so here we go guys as you can see our chicks in the brooder they seem to have uh, adjusted well they look happy they're all over the place they're making those happy chirping sounds you can see they're playing most of them actually as you can see is like they're pecking down eh? they're looking for something to eat 
which is a fantastic sign that uh, right now they're actually now ready to start eating and of course as you can see they're quite cute there eh? yeah baby chicks are always very cute so i think that's the the most rewarding part about all the work that we've actually done so now that the three hours are over so the next thing that we're going to do the final bit is for us to start adding the feed i'm checking on the floor to see whether there's some uh, watery droppings and uh, yes plenty i can see them here i can see some here i can see some here which is a good indication i can see they've already had their first droppings there so yeah awesome so these chicks are now ready to start eating so let's put in the feeders and we see how that goes so guys for feeding the chicks we use this uh, rectangular type of a feeder now these rectangular feeders of course come with a uh, a cover that has holes on them previously we used to use metallic ones but you know they are a huge challenge because of issues to do with cleaning them and they start rusting so these days we use these uh, pvc based or uh, plastic based uh, uh, feeders which are excellent because you're able to keep them clean and uh, most importantly of course they have more than enough uh, holes sufficient holes for you to be able to feed the chicks properly and so for now all we're going to do is uh, open up our feeders and <laughs> as you can see the chicks are already excited uh, knowing that there's food coming eh? so what you're going to do is we are going to add food into the feeders and uh, we are going to see how the chicks are going to react to the feed so here we go so guys this feed that you're using is actually chick mash and all this feed of course is uh, produced by home range so you could actually uh, uh, see our actual feed being used on our actual buds so let's see so you fill it up like that. Well, as you can see, they've already started eating. Eh? So it's very good quality feed. And of course, the moment, of course, the moment you just fill up the feeder, they come running. So here you go. You fill up the feeder. For the first uh, two days, you're going to leave the feeder open like that. As you can see so that the chicks are able to know where the feed is and they're able to access it and eat so let's put the feed there we see if the chicks are going to go to it oops yes there you go so as you can see they're actually looking for the feed there you go there you go there you go there so as you can see the chicks have found the feed so that's excellent so let's add the feeders on the rest of the brooder and see how it goes we've uh, added the feeders i've had added uh, four of them because they've not yet started coming to this side by the end of the day they will already have started coming what i'm happy to see is that the chicks are already feeding which is an excellent sign you can see them running all over the brooder that's a sign that they're actually in a fantastic uh, condition so uh, let us give them a couple of hours and then uh, i think you're good so the only thing that now in this brooder we're going to keep monitoring is the temperature of course we've done uh, two brooders as you can see up here we put 250 chicks but like i said our brooder is actually double story so the other brooder is down here as you can see so you can see that there are chicks which are upstairs top floor and the rest are actually here ground floor eh? so again same thing you can see the other 250 down here and uh, so we're going also going to add feed to the bottom one and guess what we will have completed our chick induction process so i want to thank you guys for watching the video i hope you've been able to learn a thing or two well, if you have any question about brooding, about any of this process, please be sure to actually uh, ask at the bottom in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll keep adding new videos. And most importantly, guys, remember that Home Range is actually the home of indigenous Kenyaji chicken. So here we have day old chicks, we have poultry feeds, we do trainings. And we actually have um, uh, a method where we're actually able to help you, uh, to assist you even when you're doing your construction of your poultry house by actually supplying you with the BQs or the bill of quantities with the list of materials that you need and also the design itself for a poultry house. So check out our website www.homerangepoultry.com. You may also give us a call on 0727 200 116. I hope guys you've learned something and remember guys, 
continue doing poultry farming because it's profitable and it will continue to make you money. Keep watching, guys.